Welcome students. In this question, we have a number theory problem. The question wants you to prove that 3 raised to the power of 164 negative 1 is divisible by 10. Now, when exactly a number can be divisible by 10? It has to end in 0. That is the natural phenomenon. Say, for example, you take 11, you square this quantity, you get 121. This can become divisible by 10 if I were to remove this one off. So, that is the idea behind solving this particular question. So, we will be able to solve this question only if this quantity, 3 raised to the power 164, is a quantity which ends with a digit 1. So, I'm giving you the proof. For 3 raised to the power 164 negative 1 to be divisible by 10, the quantity 3 raised to the power 164 should end with 1. Because only when it ends with 1, I can remove that 1 away. And once I remove that one, a classic example is shown here, I would be getting a value which is divisible by 10. So that is the objective. So the question is, when would that happen? Now, you can clearly see the exponent. The exponent has a value 164 and it is divisible by 4 right it is divisible by 4 so what am i trying to do here is i know that this quantity is divisible by 4 and i need to now check if this quantity any quantity which has an exponent which is divisible by 4 ends with 1 so that is the check that we need to do so let me write that down since we know that the exponent is divisible by 4 we now ought to find if 3 raised to the power of some n such that n is some multiple of 4 ends with the number 1. So let us check that. Now 3 raised to the power 4 will give us 81. Going further, 3 raised to the power 8 will give us 6561. Going a bit further, 3 raised to the power 12 will give you 531441. In all of these cases, 1 is occurring. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to now start by taking, let n be equal to 4k, where k is a positive integer. k is an element of a positive integer. So that means only positive values are taken. So having taken the value of k, so this would mean my 3 raised to the power of n is now equal to 3 raised to the power of 4k, which is equal to 3 raised to the power 4 of some value of k, which is equal to 81 raised to the power of some k. Now I can rewrite this 81 as 1 positive 80 raised to the power k. Now k is some integer, positive integer. Now this is very similar to our binomial expansion. Now if you were to consider a binomial expansion, say 1 positive, say some 2x raised to the power some 2, the expansion would be 1 squared positive 2x squared positive 2 times of 2x times 1. So this is equal to 1 positive. This is, I'm writing it as 
2 squared x squared positive 2 times of 2x. So this can be further rewritten as 1 positive 2 times of 2 x squared positive 2x. So I can I can rewrite it in this fashion. So what am I what am I trying to show you here? Yeah. Let me give you one more example. Say if I were to take this as 1 positive say 3x raised to the power of some 2. I'm just keeping it simple. So if I were to expand this it's going to be 1 squared positive 3x squared positive 2 times of 3x times 1 just to be straight with the principle and placing the number 1. So this is going to be equal to 1 positive 3 squared x squared positive. I can rewrite 2 times of 3x as 3 times of 2x. So this can be rewritten as 1 positive 3 of 3 times x squared positive 2x. So what am I trying to show you here? If you have a quantity, in fact, I can even take the x out. So the better way to show you is take the x out. So 1 positive 3 times of x can also be taken out. So that is going to be equal to 3 times of x positive 2. So in this case, x can be taken out 1 positive of 2x of 2x positive 2. So now I have just taken, I have just taken, this is x, I have just taken an x out. Now why am I just taking an x out and just a 2 out? Just to show you that there is a pattern of the quantity that is present within the parenthesis can be taken out. So if you want a better picture, let me just show you for 1 positive 4x. So I'm just going to take 1 positive 4x raised to the power 2 and I'm going to expand it 1 positive 4x raised to the power 2 positive 2 times of 4x times 1. So this is going to be equal to 1 positive 4 squared x squared positive 2 times of 4x. This is equal to 1 positive. I can take a 4 out and x out. So this is going to be 4x positive 2. So the underlining point is binomial theorem gives us that privilege of writing. Let me just show you. If you have a quantity expressed, so we had a quantity expressed as 1 positive 80 raised to the power k. We have this quantity. So this quantity can always be rewritten as 1 positive 80 times some quantity c for some integer. Because I have not taken an integer, I have taken always, I have taken always some quantity x over here. Now you can take it as a integer. If you were to take it as an integer, say for example, you take a value like, say, eighty, uh, say ninety-one. I can rewrite ninety-one as one positive ninety raised to the power two. If you were to expand this, you get one positive ninety squared positive two times of 90 times 1. So this is going to be equal to 1 positive. This is going to be 90. I can take 90 out. If I were to take 90 out, this is going to be 90 positive some 2. So the underlining point that I'm, I'm trying to show you here is from binomial, I can always rewrite 1 positive 80 raised to the power k, which we have got here as 1 positive 80 times some c, uh, for some, where c is some integer. Now, this means, this in turn means 3 raised to the power 1, 6, 4 will end with a number 1. So this would mean 3 raised to the power 164, negative 1 will result 
in the one being removed which subsequently will will make 3 raised to the power 164 negative 1 divisible by number 10 so that is the solution students